Hello and welcome to another video. So, my power is pretty limited. I'm I'm stuck to running generators quite a bit <clears throat> right now. I have two solar panels and 200 amp hours of lithium phosphate, okay? So, I built this just this little system literally just to run my computer setup, right? So all the hard drives and computers could just run without me worrying about them. And I also repl obviously replaced the whole 12 volt system or batteries, you know, with just the better batteries, right? But the inverter and all that, that was the kind of the, the, the idea behind this system. So it's pretty small. One panel on the roof and then I bought a new panel of the tracker. There's a whole video about how I hate that tracker. So anyway. Now, okay, so now I've been thinking about like, oh, I'm going to build this, this system into one of these shipping containers and I'm going to do this and that, you know, and this is going to be the power I need. Well, I've been going back and forth on wind, right? And I think I've already talked about this in a video, right? But this guy that I get my solar stuff from, he's, he's had two wind generators from the good company, Missouri Wind and Solar. That he got, excuse me, he bought and then he just never dealt with them. So I was, I was like really gung-ho on building a 48 volt system, right? And I'm like, gonna fight and I'm just I'm gonna start buying parts for it and all this and that and I'm just doing the math about when I'll have all those parts and da 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 right so then I started thinking about well what if I just kind of or how did it go about I was I think I was looking up I inadvertently ran across a video that showed a wind generator on either of I think it was a van right like just a little sprinter van there was two of them and they were like traveling wherever in Europe and they had wind generators on them and I was like holy shit so I looked in this and I'm like oh man people are doing this right so then I'm like maybe I should just buff my system that I have because I'm like, my, my AC units broke down in this. And these AC units they build for these RVs, they are one of the worst product obsolescence things you can buy. I mean, they are built to die, <laughs> period. So the, the really slick thing to do is put a mini split in, okay? So, to run, I have enough amp backup with the two batteries to run the inverter size I need to do all that, right? Whether I have enough power coming in is the, is the other story, right? So I'm thinking about it and I'm like looking at my RV and thinking about how it gets hot in the days and all this stuff and how, you know, the the windows get hot and all this and I'm like oh you know you look at the really really high end ones and they literally have little miniature awnings that go over the slides I have two slides right and they have these little miniature awnings right so I was in my head I've been designing this ultimate RV um, that has like the whole top and, and, and then I ran across the company that actually makes this thing, right? So, like, the whole top would be solar panels, but then it slides out, right? So, you got a whole top and it slides out, and then you have, like, double the, or triple the solar panels, right? You have triple stack. You have the top panel, then you have two stacks. One stack slides out one way, one other stack slides out the other way, right? On all slides, right? So, I was looking at a big unit, right? And that would be pretty cool. So I've been thinking about that for a while because I just think about shit like that design and all this shit. So, and now I'm like thinking, I'm like, well, 
at the rate everything's going in my life, my business sells and it's like, bam, I can do that, right? But right now, you know, the amount of money I make, which is a shitload for doing zero work, you know, I'm like like 80 grand a year and I do zero work right now, that amount's gonna continue to drop because I'm not putting anything into it. It's just all residuals. So at the rate that I have, now the business sells, and everything's just good. So at that rate, things are gonna take a while to get done. So, and power is like, and my RV is a huge investment that I, once I have the house built, then the RV goes up for sale, and that has been like, that's gonna be like the solar system, the big fancy solar system, right? With the, um, te not Tesla, Edison batteries, Edison. Yeah, these things last like 100 years. They're 30 year warranty batteries, right? super low voltage and, you, and heavy, big, massive thing, but you put that in and you maintain it. So that's that's the house system, right? Those batteries are insane. Like that's like a $40,000 battery. <laughs> and if I just was, and, and I might get there, by the time I'm ready to buy all this, I might just end up going with the Tesla car packs, which the only reason that I wanna put those in the house is just because of uh, safety concerns, but the Tesla wall is that. So all I gotta do is build the house in a manner to have a separated area that I can have this insane, you know, Tesla batteries and I'll save myself so much money, it's insane. I mean, we're talking about $40,000 for the, for the, for the, uh, Iron Edison batteries and the equivalent power over to the other batteries, it'd probably be about maybe 8,000 bucks or, yeah, huge difference, right? And I might get a pack and play around with it because, it, you know, that's the house system. Then I got like the system I need like for the shop, which is where I was gonna for sure use the Tesla packs, right? And that was gonna be the system I was gonna build next, right? So now I'm thinking about just going fucking nuts on my RV, right? So literally putting solar panel awnings over all the windows. So, so they would literally go whoop, whoop, like a regular fucking awning all the way down. I mean, to buy one of those roller fucking awnings, those things are gonna be expensive. Any kind of awning, right? Now I could just build a custom one out of a solar panel, and now not only am I blocking the sun from beating on my windows, I'm also generating a ton of power. Like 300 watt, well, with the sun angle and all that, right? So then I'm like, I want to put not one, because one, why would I just put one wind generator? Mainly because the guy, I buy, he has two for sale. I guess they're the same one, right? So, and this is just a challenge, like just loading, putting wind generators on an RV. Now, you know, I could do some kind of blah, blah, but I'm like going to make it legitimate to where they'll lay down and stow and then pop up, you know, like deployable, right? And, you know, right off the back. So I've already started the whole process of designing this in my head. And now this is something that the welding shop's going to have to finish the welds on this. Like I can tack all the, I can tack everything together and then just take it to the shop and then they can weld it together because I can't do good enough welds out here to do that. Right. So, and I even just found a fucking Craigslist post. This guy has fucking 31 to 33 feet lengths of all kinds of different pipe, 80, 80, schedule 80, which I'm hope, I haven't looked this up, I should have looked this up, 
I, I'm hoping Schedule 80 is more than Schedule 40. Because Schedule 40 is what I use for to, to get heavy-duty stuff done. So if it's Schedule 80, that's even more heavy-duty. Perfect. That's what you need for putting windmills on RVs. Yeah. I've got the whole concept. One will be higher than the other. So one will be basically as low as it can be to just be, you know, probably about like maybe one foot above the height of the air conditioner, right? And then the other one will be like um, one foot higher than that other one, right? So the, so the, they'll just be out of each other's way, basically, right? Maximum. So that means I need, I'll be replacing in my RV, I'll need to buy a different charge controller, which Missouri Wind and Solar has a charge controller that can handle like everything. Like one charge controller for, I could put hydro, wind, solar, all on one charge controller. Perfect, right? It's, I'm gonna have to rearrange what I have, whatever. Um, but I could put cover panels all over this thing and run them some in series some in parallel to get whatever i need so by doing that i mean i'm probably talking about buying like maybe like like six panels and these two things so i'm not even talking about a bunch of money but mounting bracket shit you know, that paying the company to weld it, paint it and all that, that's going to be probably a chunk of money, right? But that is all equity, you know? I mean, if, as long as it's not some fucking rickety, um, crappy built thing, right? As long as, and I'm, I'm like going to have, probably going to have like a winch system that I mount down to fucking, to wait, to raise them and lower them like a remote control winch, like that level of ease and deployability. Right. So I just like the, the concept is they'll be laying on the roof and then the pipe that's up on the roof is bigger than the pipe that goes inside of it. So there'll be a pipe that slides down inside of it and then that'll slide out and then somehow connect, you know, probably pin. So you'll, you'll pull this pipe out and then you'll put a pin in and then in the, in the bottom of that pipe that you just pulled out, that will be hooked to a winch. And then you turn on the winch, and the winch will just pull that right down, lifting the, the thing on the top, and then there'll be a receiver down in the bottom. Uh, basically, this all hooks to, like, the um, the bumper on... It'll probably, I'll probably have to... I don't know what I'll have to do, but I might just run a pipe right straight through that bumper and make the connection to the bumper, not a welded connection, but the pipe just goes all the way through and then the two things mount and bolt. So then there's a bolt there. And then, I mean, I'm gonna have to have it somehow onto the top of the RV connected somewhere, right? So that's, you know, I don't know. That's gonna be the fun part. Right? And then there's going to have to be the little gizmo that holds the thing when it drops down. And then there's some kind of mechanism for connecting that. Because, I mean, I'm not looking to have my RV, like, permanently connected to the fucking ground or anything like that with this bullshit. Like, this is just all going to just be on it. Right? Now I'll be creating a fuck ton of extra power, in theory, right? So, but I don't want to add more. I mean, I would like to add more batteries, but it's just like, where the fuck am I going to put all this shit, right? Like adding all the solar panels and the wind, all that stuff's outside. Changing the charge controller over, no big deal. But when I start to look and like 
God, I need to do this and this and this. It's like big, long, heavy wire runs and all this stuff is just a bitch. And so I probably am not going to add any more batteries. That's, I mean, I'll be making a ton of power, but the concept is that when I'll be making the most power, hmm, um, I'll just have this mini split that'll be running my, so like air conditioner, right? That'll the, the, be enough solar power. This mini split that I found, it only draws like 500 watts, not even, it's like, four, it's like 460 or something like that, right? So I already have an inverter that could run it, but I'll probably just add another inverter to just run the mini split that way I can still run everything that I have going on with the other thing and just not interfere. So I'll add, I'll have to change a charge controller. I'll have to um, add a um, inverter and then the mini split, right? But after I get done adding all that stuff and installing all that stuff, I mean, wow. This is really going to be a valuable trailer. I mean, off-grid beast, right? So, that's, you know, I and I went, you know, I got all into these windmills because my neighbor put up one up, but the first two neighbors, theirs were so junk that I'm like, fuck, that's a waste of fucking time, and it looks like shit. But then he puts up a nice one over here. I'm like, damn, and it's blowing all the time. And it's like, now I'm just like, oh, win, win, win. Because, like, right now I'm not getting shit out of my solar panels. But the fucking, the wind is blowing. The wind is fucking blowing. So it's definitely, you know, and I got the fucking generator running. And that's just like, huh. Yeah, although the generator is just barely putzing along and it's on propane. So, I mean, it literally is, is like, I mean, hardly producing any power to, to be able to keep up right now. Um, and I just do it just to, just to not let the batteries, you know, I might as well keep them charged up a little bit. So, anyway, um... Yeah, and it's going to be a fun project. I mean, hanging solar panels all over. I'd even like to figure out a way to put them to where they are over the tops of the slides. So when the slides pull out, they're pulling out solar panel panels. One's bigger than the other. One would probably be one panel. The other would probably be two or three. Uh, three, three, maybe two and three. But I don't know if that's going to work out or not because that's some serious engineering. I mean, having, you know, I put in some sort of extensions onto the slides and, and then the slides kind of you know, they kind of, they kind of come out and go up and then they come out and then they go kind of down and then they kind of go up a little bit when they get out to the very end, you know? So the, whatever was the slide would have to have give in it. Yeah. But that would be, that would be so effective because then not only is the sun not beating on that part of which that, those slides have, there's like hardly any insulation. I think this is a, a three season RV and I'm rocking four seasons, but um, it might be a four season. It does have some pretty, for, for RVs, heavy extra insulation in um, the slide. So it might be four seasons, but I don't know. Um, I also got to put a skirt around the bottom. I'm not going to use straw this year. I'm going to use a skirt. I'm going to buy this. This company has a, and that'll then, you know, also save power. But anyway, I've now rambled on about this new RV power system for almost 20 minutes. And a lot of it is just how much fun is it going to be to put freaking wind generators on my RV? 
that's going to be fun. I mean, in the middle of the project, I'm going to be fucking screaming and yelling pissed off at some point, I'm sure. But overall, I mean, I won't even start it if I can't figure out the engineering to, to begin with. And it's just like, whatever. Like, oh, like, where am I going to do this? Yeah, fuck it. You know, and I just will. I just won't do it, right? If, if I can't figure out a way that I'm totally confident is going to be, you know, legitimate, not like oh fuck dude man you know because it one little stupid thing on my investment rv and it could just destroy the value like if nobody else wants to buy this because that shit looks so sketchy you know then i fucked myself right so that's what i have to avoid because i have to i want the power i want it bad i want to have that oh that sweet sweet no generator life but I also want to protect the value of my RV. You know, like, that big heavy pipe um, connected to, I don't know how heavy those wind generator is, but then that whole thing has to lay on top of the RV. And, I mean, it can be done. I mean, basically, you just I just build... Um, something that spreads the weight out over a distance and you know but still you know i don't want to fuck the value of my rv off that's that's a huge consideration so anyway that's my next project after i'm all done with all these other projects because i still have to get the rocks in make the new pad and uh build the uh the the roof awning and um yeah and then <laughs> i'll be looking to do that and it'll probably be in the middle of the damn winter so that kind of work will be brutal anyway thanks for liking and subscribing and peace